Good morning, guys. What's up? It's Sunday. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Are you ready? It's going to be incredible. It's going to be amazing. I'm so glad to see you. Just kidding. I don't see anybody. I'm in a room. I'm actually in the church down in the SEU room today. What, what? Uh, so yeah, a little change of scenery happening. And uh, yeah, it's going to be an amazing day. If you guys came out to church today, good morning. It's so good that you guys are in the house. Um, I know that you're going to have a lot of fun today. And um, it's going to be a good one. It's always a good one. Come on. It is Sunday. It is like the best day of the week. I love Sundays. So good. Um, so good morning. We're going to start out with a little bit of a game. A little bit of a game. A little bit of a game. Um, and uh, I am going to have you make comments in the bottomy chatty part. Oh, I just don't even know what I did. I just broke my nail like back far. It hurts. I actually, I think I know what I did do. I'll tell you in a second. Um, okay, so we're gonna play a little bit of a game here to kind of get things warmed up and started this morning. Um, I am going to hold up an item and you are going to type into your little chat or you're gonna shout out to your teacher, Miss Cynthia, what you think um, or where you think you would use this item, where you think you would go to use it, you know, just kind of that thing. So we're going to start out easy. It's going to be an easy one. First thing is this. Oh, yeah. What is this? It's a beach towel, right? It's a towel. Where might you use this towel? This is actually a really cool one. It smells good. Some good fabric softener on this thing. Woo! It's kind of chilly down here. This actually feels nice. What do we think? Where do we use this kind of towel? Where do we use a beach towel? It's kind of in the name, but you use it other places too, right? You can use it other places too. Where do you think you use um, a beach towel? Where are you going to use it? Where are you going to go to use it? Do you think maybe swimming pool? Yeah. The beach, obviously. The beach is an obvious choice. Maybe the pond. Like we go to the pond sometimes and we take our beach towels down. Okay, so beach towel. Some people use it for the, for their bath towel too, because you know it's big and fluffy and amazing. All right, next thing. Where would you be at, maybe, where there is a person who is spraying this on your hair? Where might you be if someone is uh, working on your hair? And they are maybe spraying some of this on, maybe like a little spike. Where are you at? Where do you think you're at? What do you think? Some hairspray. Hairspray. Where do you think you're at? Or, you know, right? Hairdresser? Maybe you're just at home because mom cuts your hair. Yep. I'm the hair cutter at our house, right? But this is the salon, right? Hair salon, hairdresser. They're going to make sure you're pretty. Nice. All right, here's the next one. Where might you play with one of these? Where would you be if you're playing with one of these guys? This is maybe a little more of a trick question, maybe. I like that it has tic-tac-toe on it. I could play some tic-tac-toe while I see. Where do you think you are? Yes, Alexis, woo! No, just kidding. Monkeys, all monkeys. Um, where are you if you were playing with one of these? Right? You're probably at a playground, right? The park. Maybe you're at someone's house and they, like a friend's house, and they have a play set and they have something like this so you can play some tic tac toe. Um, right? That's the kind of place that you would find something like this. Good job, guys. Good answers. Good answers. All right, here we go. Where might someone be using some of this on you? Ooh, do you see what it is? Dental floss, where are you at? I mean, hopefully you're at home and you're using this too. But where is the place that you go that they do it for you? Ah, ah, right? Where do you go to get dental floss used on you? Where do you think? The dentist, of course. Anybody go to the dentist recently? No cavities? Hopefully there's no quarantine cavities happening. Cavities. All right, I got one more. Nope, two more. Where are you at if you are using this? Hmm, we've probably used a lot of this over quarantine. We've been at this place a lot. 
right? Where are we at? Miss Cynthia, you're at Target flossing your teeth? Perfect. I love it. Uh, where are we using this guy? Right? We're usually using this when we are at home and we want to put on some Netflix, right? Or YouTube, right? And we're going to watch some TV, watch some videos, watch some, you know, funny animal videos where they're doing goofy things or funny baby videos where babies are doing funny things or just funny videos in general. Or maybe um, we like to watch videos sometimes where people are getting hurt, like not badly injured, but just a little bit. Like they're riding their bike and they try to like ramp something. You're like, this is a terrible idea. What are they doing? They're like, yep, there it is. That's what, that's what happened. They just fell off and bunked their head, right? I like those kind of videos. I think they're fun. Okay, last one. This is something that you will never see Miss Val doing, but where might I be going and what might I be doing if I was wearing this? Oh yeah. Where am I going and what am I doing if I am using this? My jogging? Is this my jogging helmet? Am I going to go play some field hockey? Is this a field hockey helmet? Am I going to play some football? No. It's a bike helmet, right? You're probably going to go ride your bike. Maybe go to the park. Maybe go on some trails. Maybe be on the road. I don't know. Whatever you're doing. Go for a bike ride. I don't like bikes. I don't think bikes are fun at all. They are terrible. They hurt my butt. Anybody else? Come on. Ouch. That's not fun. I don't know how people ride their bikes so much. I don't, I don't enjoy it. I don't. Ooh. I slipped my hair. I mean. Pretty much. All right. Well, those were good answers. Good answers from all. Um, for all of you guys who are just still now just joining in, good morning. We're glad that you're tuned in. And for those of you that are watching, hello again. All right, we're about to get into the message. And today's message, we are talking about some big stuff. All right, I want you to close your eyes right now. And I want you to think of like the most amazing place possible. Now, for me, I am a complex person, okay? I love the beach, like love the beach, <gasps> love the beach, love it. The quieter, the better, the, uh, just the waves crashing, just that sound of the seagulls and even like people talking, just the whole thing. I love it. The smells of the beach, unless it's like, there's like rotting fish somewhere and then I don't like it so much. So for me, I close my eyes and I envision something like this. Oh man, do you see that beautiful blue water and light whitish sandy beaches oh man there was a little seaweed that day but I was okay I didn't mind I did not mind at all because it was outside the water not in the water so it was fine right this beautiful place right I love the beach love it it's like magical but you know what I again it's like I said I'm a very you know I like lots of different things I also think that this is one of the most beautiful places New York City Oh my goodness, there is something so amazing and beautiful with the architecture and the buildings and all the people and just, I love it. I literally love it there. The energy, I'm just like, yes, so good. And there's just good food everywhere. So much good food. Who does not like to eat yummy things when they go places, right? And so we just picture really great stuff. Now today we are going to be talking about a little thing called heaven. I know, I know, heaven seems like kind of a very abstract thing. And you're right, it is. I have a hard time imagining heaven, what it's going to be like. Um, the best I can do is, is when I think of all of the things that I love best, my favorite things in the whole world, and I put all of those things and I mush them together and I'm like, boom, that's what heaven's going to be like. Because that's the most my brain can comprehend because my brain is just tiny compared to God's brain. And so we're going to be in the very last book of the Bible. So if you have your Bibles, if you have your Bibles, if you didn't lose your Bibles, if you haven't lost it, it's not like gone missing during Corona, uh, go ahead, open up your Bible or a Bible, you know, just Bibles. And we're going to go to the very last book of the Bible. It is the book of Revelation. Now, the book of Revelation was written by John while he was in prison. So John was kind of an old man. 
Um, he was towards the end of his life, and he was on this island called Palmos. I think I'm saying that right, Palmos. And uh, it was just an island of prisoners. There was no way off, or you know, you know, like you couldn't get off the island. You were just there. And you would work, and that was kind of like what your deal was. You were on this island. And so John is there. He's basically lived up the rest of his days. Um, and he's living on this island. And uh, he is, one day, uh, he has his vision, okay? Now, you have to understand that John is like one of the last disciples left. Uh, everyone else had pretty much passed away. And so... Um, he was sent to prison because he was sharing about Jesus. And I am sure while he was at this prison, he continued to share about Jesus because that was John's deal. He was all about it. Um, and here is the thing, you know, John had seen some amazing things, right? He walked around with Jesus. He got to hang out with him. He got to see miracles. He got to witness uh, Jesus and Peter walking on water, which I'm like, sign me up for that in heaven. I want to be on water walking detail. Let's go. That seems really fun. Um, he saw, you know, Lazarus raised back to life. He saw Jesus crucified, which was really terrible. But then he also saw Jesus come back and got to hang out with him again when he came back from the dead, which was amazing, right? Um, but then even after Jesus was gone, there was lots of great things with people coming to know the Lord and people getting to know Jesus. And that was incredible. And again, more miracles happening and just awesome stuff. But there was also terrible things he saw. He saw his friends get crucified, get stoned, uh, be killed, be, you know, just, just bad stuff. That Christians back in that day, man, they had some tough roads to walk. It was not easy for them. And so as much good as he saw, he also saw a lot of sad things too. And so one day he is, you know, just kind of chilling, chilling in prison, hanging out. I don't really know what they did on the island fully. Um, but one day he's kind of hanging and he hears a trumpet sound. Now, I feel like there's probably not a lot of trumpets at prison. That's not a thing that is happening. Um, there's not a lot of like jazz bands happening up on the prison. And so he hears this trumpet and uh, he hears a voice tell him, write down what I am about to tell you. And if you go to Revelations 1... And verse 17, it says, um, when I saw him, I fell at his feet. You see, he had seen Jesus. Jesus appeared to him, okay? With the trumpet sound and this crazy light, Jesus appears. And it says, I fell at his feet as if I were dead. That seems accurate. That feels like what I would do if I fell at Jesus. If I saw Jesus, I would just be like, dead. Holy moly, what's happening, right? And it said, uh, he laid his right hand on me and he said, don't be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I died, but look, I am alive forever and ever. And so John's like, woo! All right. It's been a long time since you went scampering up to heaven. I saw that happen. This is amazing. Jesus is back. Jesus, what do you got for me? And so Jesus is telling him, I need you to write this down. Now, there's a lot of detail in Revelation. I got to be honest with you. Revelation, um, I read through my Bible like every year. Um, I go through like front to back. I get through it. And just am learning from God and just hearing new things and always like learning new stuff. But I have to be really honest because I like to be honest with you guys. Revelation scares me a little. There's a lot of information in here that I don't understand. It's a lot of details. I'm not that much of a detailed person. It's just like, whoa! Okay, so we've got Revelation. There's a lot of information in here about what it's going to look like when, when the end comes, okay? When Jesus comes again, there's going to be this whole thing that happens. It's a lot of detail. And John is responsible for writing it all down. I'm saying this is like a crazy dream he's having, a crazy encounter, but John was a very good writer and he did a good job with it. It just scares me. So I don't camp out in Revelation too often. This is not a book that I'm like, I'm going to sit and spend a month just reading Revelation and digging in. I kind of go, how fast can I read through this? And okay, got through the scary parts. And now let's go back to the beginning where it's all God created the heaven and the earth and everything was good and shiny and bright and amazing, right? It gets a little scary for me and that's just me. Maybe you guys won't be scared at all. Maybe you'll be totally fine because you're just brave. But I am a little bit of a scaredy cat. A little bit. A little bit. So uh, some of the things that they talk about at the end are what heaven is going to look like. Now, again, I told you my picture of heaven is like all of my favorite things on earth, all smushed together, swirled together, all of my favorite people all together. 
Um, I'm really excited to um, see some people who I've lost. So like my nanny, um, that would be my great grandmother. She died when I was 17 and she was the ripe old age of 97 when she died. Okay. And she was born in 1904. So she was like lived in a whole different era. And I used to love hanging out with her and hearing stories about her life because she just, it was like a whole different world like that she lived in. And so I would just sit and listen to her tell stories. She was such an interesting person to me. So I can't wait to get to heaven and hang out with my nanny again and tell her drink her water because the last like two years of her life, that was mostly what our conversations would be. She one, wouldn't really know who I was. She would just kind of name me different people each time she would see me. And she never wanted to drink her water. So I was like, Nanny, did you drink some water? Hey, Nanny, do you want to eat, drink some water? And I bet that in heaven, she doesn't have to drink water anymore because she really hated it here on earth. So no water for Nanny in heaven. But I'm looking forward to like people that I'll get to see again. It's going to be amazing. But he starts telling him some information, some details of what it's going to look like. All right. So here we go. Um, and it says this, let me make sure that I'm starting at the right place. Okay. So in Revelation 21, one, that's like jumping ahead a few chapters. It says, um, I saw a new heaven and new earth. Okay. A new heaven and a new earth. Now he had said before in a different chapter, there are many rooms in my father's house. Um, and if that wasn't true, I wouldn't have told you, right? Um, that there's going to be a place prepared. So this is more information. And he says, um, this is a place that is being made for everyone who believes in Jesus. We get to go to this amazing place, big houses, lots of room. And the biggest thing is that we get to hang out with God. Okay. This is a voice spoke from the throne. And it said this, um, look, God now makes his home with the people. Dude, that is so cool. Like, we will get to hang out with God. Like, I'm excited to hang out with Jesus, too, because, you know, Jesus and, and hear his stories. I want to be, like, old school disciple. Like, tell me your stories, Jesus. I want to hear it firsthand. It's going to be amazing. The fish was this big. Whatever. It's going to be crazy. Um, but, man, to get to walk and talk and see God. That's incredible. And he's excited. Like, I mean, he gets to be with us, too. He's excited about this, okay? And it says that they will be his people. And God will be them and and uh, and be with them and, and be their God. And it says this, he will wipe away every tear from their eyes and there will be no more death and no more sadness and there will be no more crying and no more pain. Imagine a place where there's just no more sadness, um, no more tears. They're gone. I feel like I live there sometimes now because I don't cry very often, but legit no more no more sadness no more pain no more suffering no more sickness no more people leaving you and having to go away you don't get to see them anymore like it's heaven it's all of the best things and man what an amazing day that is gonna be right okay then the next thing it says there is going to be a light Woo! and this light is not from a sun or from a moon but this light is going to come from God himself. It will be his holy presence that will just put this beautiful glow. Come on. That's pretty cool. Well, we need sunglasses. Hold on, God. I need to get my shades on. You're looking a little bright today. Boom. Got them. Okay. It's, it's, you're, you're, you're sparkling a little too much. It's a little too much shine for me. I got to get my, my glasses on. Right? That he himself is going to be the light that guides our day. Come on. Pretty cool, pretty cool, pretty cool. And then it says also that there is this crystal clear um, river that's running through the center of heaven. I love crystal clear water. It's my favorite. When we went on our cruise last year, we went to all these cool islands, and there was these amazing bodies of water, and they were amazing. It was crazy. Um, it was awesome and amazing. And so and so clear, and you can just see all the fishes and, and all the little seashells, like everything. It's just, it's beautiful. So almost imagine this beautiful, crystal clear river, right? And it says on the sides of the river, there's going to be these trees that grow up, and they're going to have fruit all year. Come on, where are my fruit people at? Who's like, yeah, no more apple season, no more peach season, no more, um, what else grows in trees? Plums. 
No more, just plums, just boom, they're there. Um, pineapple trees, that's not true. Pineapples grow plant? I think pineapples are a plant and they like pop out of the plant on the ground. I think, I'm not really good with growing things. Not my jam. Um, and so there's gonna be these 12 trees. They're gonna have this beautiful crop of all these delicious fruits. Pears, that grows on a tree. You know, I'm, it's coming to me. Um, and, and it says, uh, God's servants will serve him and they will see his face. We'll get to hang out with God and get to do what we were created to do, which was serve people. Watermelons, I don't think grow on trees. I don't think watermelons grow on trees. That's saw the watermelon pop up. Um, and then finally it says, this is how he ends this whole thing. May the grace of the Lord Jesus be with God's people. Amen. And that's how it ends. That's, that's the end of our book. Um, there's going to come a time where we're going to get to have this amazing, amazing, I'm going to turn off the light because it was blinding me a little bit. I'm seeing spots. God, your light is too beautiful. I can't. It's, just, it's too much for me right now. My heavenly eyes can't understand. We are going to have a day where we are going to um, be able to go and just have this amazing future. And this is the bottom line, guys. This is the thing that you need to like wrap your head around. And it's like almost you don't because it's like just, you know. But following Jesus will turn out so much better than you can imagine. That God's idea of what's going to happen is so much greater than our brains can comprehend. Because God is the one who created everything. Like God created us. He figured out how to like make these organs work so that our bodies can like filter out the bad things and process things. And you eat food and it gives you energy and it like all of it. Your brain just is doing its own thing without any like it's just I don't even know how that works. Like I'm not that smart. And how your arms and legs you can... They, they can do these things and they can just even walk around upright. Like, it's amazing. God created this incredible human form. Amazing. All the animals and the detail. Like, when you look at, at just the things that he made, like, can you even imagine what he has in store for heaven? Like, this was, Earth, I feel like, was his warm-up. It's like, all right, guys, I'm just going to, like, try some things. We're going to see how it goes. You know what I mean? And then he's had, like, thousands of years to practice and create even more amazing and incredible things, right? Like, I'm just like, I can't wait. It's going to be awesome, <sighs> right? I don't know what it's going to look like. I don't know other than these trees and this beautiful crystal clear lake and the really pretty light. I don't know, but I'm excited about it. And it's going to be just this amazing thing. And so I'm excited. I hope you guys are excited. Um, and if you want to read more about it, you can read a Revelation. Like I said, there's some parts that are confusing. There's some parts that are really confusing. There are some parts that are really, really, really confusing. It's okay. Um, it's, it's just a lot of details and good stuff. Um, but it's in there. And it's just giving us that glimpse, a little, little tiny little splash of what is to come. And I'm excited for it. Because God is good and I can't even, I can't even wait. It's going to be awesome. All right, it is week four. This is it. This is week four. Normally in class this week, we would be doing Memory Verse Sunday, right? And uh, this is our memory verse. For it is by grace that you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is a gift of God. This is our memory verse. It is Ephesians 2, 8. Can you see it? I keep going the wrong direction. This is the new uh, NIV version. Um, here is the deal. Instead of us doing it in class today, um, I just want to let you know that we are going to be asking you guys to do videos again and posting them online. Tagging FL Kids, hashtag FL Kids, at FL Kids, something letting us know FL Kids, um, so that we can see you guys do your memory verse. If 30 people, 30 people can do it, 3 0. Is that the right way? 30? I don't know. I, it's backwards in my head. 30. I give up. 30 people can do it. Last month, last time we did it, it was only 20 had to do it. We had 29, I think. So we felt like we could say 30. If 30 of you do it, next week we will put out a video. So this coming week, you're gonna do your, you're gonna learn your memory verse. You are gonna do a little video, post it up on Facebook, or you can um, message me or Miss Ashley or Miss Gina or Miss Gabby or Miss Cynthia, or Miss McKenzie, you can like just text it to us or message it to us. If you don't want to put up on social media, that's totally fine if you don't do really social media that much. 
totally fine. Um, if 30 people do it, if you guys were at BBS, you remember um, this thing happened where Miss Val bought um, a cow tongue for Miss Gina to touch in her box of fear. Cow tongue. Hello. If 30 of you, I have this, I put it in the freezer then when we were done with it. If 30 of you, it's in my little bag here. If 30 of you memorize your verse and get it to us, Miss Val is going to cook this cow tongue and all of us leaders are gonna eat it. Eating the cow tongue. Now, I gotta be honest, I'm not excited about it. I don't eat the normal parts of cow and I definitely do not wanna eat this cow tongue. But if you guys follow through and you do 30 of you post up those videos, cow tongue will be coming at you the following week. I know, it's, I know you kids are gonna like this. You're gonna enjoy this. I think, that, I, I think this is the one time I'm a little bit hoping that you guys don't do it. <laughs> Just a little bit. I mean, I really want you to know it. I really do. But I hope you learn it and then forget to post a video so that I don't have to eat cow tongue. Just being honest. Just being honest. All about honesty here at FL Kids. So do your memory verse, memorize it, get a video, and we will be posting up a video the following week of cow tongue eating. Yum! No. That's it for today, guys. We love you. Have a great rest of class. Have a great rest of your Sunday. And we will catch you next week right here. Don't miss out. Love ya. Peace out, guys. Bye.